Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, we're going to look under the Mesh Tools menu. I'll just break that off right here. And we're going to look at the Offset Edge Loop Tool. Offset Edge Loop Tool. If we look into the options, we can see several settings here and a description to insert edge loops on both sides of an edge. Click an edge and drag. So pretty simple instructions. So I'm going to close this now. I'm going to start with a cube, something simple. I'll just hide the grid. Okay, so we have a cube here, and so we're just going to use this tool to insert edge loops on both sides of an edge, then click the edge and drag to do so. So I'm just going to hit enter tool here. And if I just click on an edge and drag, left and right, if you go up and down, it's not quite as easy to control. It's more of a left and right kind of motion. You can see it's these little dotted lines are traveling with my mouse as long as I hold it down, the left mouse button. And when I let go, it inserts two edges on either side of the original edge. Now you can see here that it gets a little wonky, technical term, <laughs> when you're trying to do so on non-quad faces. You can see how this, this face over here now has multiple edges that are beyond four because it's a four or a quad is what you're typically looking for for clean geometry. So it kind of gets a little uh, convoluted when you start inserting edge, lo edge loops like this without closing the loop around, for example. And so what I'd want to do in this case is maybe go down here and kind of do a similar function. And then I could take, say, my multi-cut tool, click and drag to this vertex, click and drag to that vertex, and hit enter. Do the same over here, like so. And then if I wanted to then use this tool again, say over here, it's a little bit cleaner, but again, we get a little strange just over here. So if you want to just insert edge loop on a cube like this, probably not the best choice. I could go to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop versus Offset Edge Loop. Insert Edge Loop, click and drag, and get a loop all the way around and a loop all the way around like this. So depending on what it is you're trying to do, you use the appropriate tool, right? Go around like this, for example. However, this tool does seem like it has some cool functions. For example, if you had something a little more complicated, so here I have this shape uh, from a previous project. It's kind of isolated it by itself, so it's kind of unrecognizable as far as what it is, but it's okay. But the idea, though, is let's say, for example, we have this edge loop here going around this kind of protruding portion on this uh, box-like shape. And the idea behind this is that I would like to press the 3 key, which enters that uh, smooth mesh preview. Press 1 key for back to normal. Press the 3 key. Again, kind of get a preview as if I had hit the smooth button. Now, if I look at this edge corner here, you see how it gets really, really soft and round through here, and I'd like it to be more sharp. And so in order to do that, you need to bevel this edge loop, or we could use the offset edge loop here instead. So let's say we hit enter tool, I'll click and drag on this edge loop, and it gives me the offset dotted lines there. I'll just make it like this, let go. And so now it's inserted an edge loop on both sides. So when I hit the three key now, you can see that it stays much more sharp. So it's a relatively quick way of uh, inserting edge loops on either side of another edge loop. And we do have some options here. Now you'll notice that for this particular object, because of the way it's shaped and the si sizes of the faces that we have, if I were to click and drag on this face, you'll notice that by default anyway, the edges that are being projected on by either side are, not, are actually not equal distant. You can see here, maintain position setting is set to relative distance from edge, not equal distance from edge. So that would be the setting we want to change here. So relatively, this face is much larger than this face. And so the distance between this edge and this edge versus the distance between this edge and this edge are much different. And so the percentage of space between the two new edges are relative based on the size of those faces or the distance between those edges. So let me undo that and choose equal distance from edge instead. Hit enter tool, click and drag, and there you can see we get that more equal distance that I talked about earlier. And I think most of the time that's what you're going to want, usually. I think that's typical. 
you're going to want that equal distance. So you can get this very clean uh, beveled like effect on an edge loop like we did up here. So we, if I were to double click on this edge loop, shift double click on this edge loop and control delete to delete them. Then I can do this again with the equal distance turned on. Click and drag. Now we get a much cleaner look. So now we know these, these edge loops that were inserted are equally distant. That's, that can be important. Let's look at these options. So we have delete edge or maintain four-sided polygons is grayed out currently. Okay, we'll get back to that. Insert with edge flow. So insert with edge flow is a command that we've seen on other tools that we've had before. You also see here with that turned on, the adjust edge flow slider becomes available. Without it, it's grayed out. So insert with edge flow. So if I insert with edge flow, enter tool, click and drag. Okay, I'm gonna make my insertion let go. You notice how they, it shifts slightly? Okay, that's with insert with edge flow. It kind of maintains this curvature, which again, I think is preferable most of the time. I think most of the time people would like that. If you really want to try to keep that hard, crisp edge, maybe not. If I turn it off again and do this option again, see that it doesn't shift outward to maintain like a smooth flow through here. That's with insert edge flow turned off, which is the default. Again, undo, insert with edge to insert with edge flow, click and drag, and again it shifts outward a little bit to kind of maintain this flow of the surface, which again is something I personally prefer most of the time. So it's a good thing to keep that, turn that on whenever you know that that's what you want. So with this option turned on, we have that adjust edge flow setting. So let me undo that, and let's try, well first let's keep it at one, and I'll make a, a kind of a large cut like this, we get a, a much bigger difference. So hopefully we can see a difference between this with the adjust edge flow set to one. And then let's, if we take it at a zero, I'm assuming this is gonna have no effect, but let's just confirm that. Yeah, so it's as if insert edge flow is not on with adjust edge flow set to zero. So I put it like 0.5 or so, or somewhere in the middle, and then do something similar. Again, we have a little bit of an effect, but it's not as prominent. So with it set all the way up to one, we get that full uh, force edge flow whenever we insert the edge loop like that. So much bigger uh, prominent curvature maintenance through there. All right, let's look at the start slash end vertex offset now. By default, it's set to zero. You notice that the slider handles in the middle of the slider. That means it could go a negative direction or a positive direction. So let's what we've been seeing is with it at zero. So let's go ahead and make it negative, like all the way to negative one. Let's see what kind of impact we get. Or actually, let me just get a plane actually for this particular example. I'll create a plane. I'm gonna insert an edge loop kind of coming from this corner down to here to about here and then back up to there. And I'll do the same on the other side. Hit enter. So we have this kind of look and then I'll delete between here. Control delete like this. Okay, but with this scenario, again, we have our start end vertex offset at zero. I'm gonna turn off insert with edge flow for now. And enter tool, and I'm just gonna click and drag, and notice we get something like this, let go. And these get inserted, okay? Pretty self-explanatory. Now if I turn uh, start end vertex offset, start end vertex offset, if I make it go, say, negative, and say enter tool now, and do this. Notice what happens. The edges, the ends of this inserted vertex are pushed way out. If I undo this and do a positive direction, enter tool, it gets pulled way in. So it's going to take some fine tuning there. Let's say if I were to let's say if I were to do this, okay, and do this again. Okay, it's too much. What I could do to move this over. If I go over here to under inputs, poly duplicate edge one, make sure I am in object mode. Here's the offset uh, slider. Here's at 0.43. We have start and end vertex offset. And so we have these same settings as you notice from the options. So the start vertex offset, if I were to middle click and drag, see there I can change it after I've inserted it. So you can kind of uh, uh, 
kind of eyeball it and guess what your start and vertex offset should be based on your situation. And then you can go back into here and change it. If I hold down the control key while you mental click and drag, you get a much finer tuned uh, adjustment on the slider. So I can go, go to my end one. There we go. Kind of adjust that a bit to however you want it to be. So don't forget about that. If you do it and you realize, oh no, the offset is way too much or way too little, Yes, okay, just go over here into the channel box or you can go to the attribute editor and look for the poly duplicate edge tab. We have the same settings here. A slider right there and a slider right here to change it after the fact. You also have insert with edge flow turned on and off. You can turn it on and off even again after the fact, right? Then you have the offset is where that edge loop ends up in the uh, faces. So don't worry about using the tool and then messing up and like having to delete it and do it again. You can always go in here into the options. They also got the relative versus absolute different uh, distances between the two edges. Absolute being equal distant, relative being relative based on the size of the faces involved. What the delete edge checkbox should do is it's supposed to attempt to maintain four-sided faces and will delete edges whenever uh, it doesn't do so. Let's see if I can try to uh, get that op uh, opportunity to come up. I have delete edge turned on. Let's see, I'm going to have to do it again, of course, with a new tool. So the notice up here in the options, delete edge is grayed out. In order for this to become available, you have to actually change the tool completion, the next setting down here under smoothing angle, from automatically to press enter. And then with press enter turned on, you see the delete edge becomes an option. So delete edge is on by default as long as this press enter is turned on. So what this simply means is you'll notice that when we've used this tool, enter and let go, it does it. So, so there's no having to, you know, confirm, right? Undo that. I'm actually, I'm actually going to take this start and vertex back to the zero. So change it to press enter, click and drag. Again, I have to enter the tool again to, to uh, have these new settings apply. So now I've let go and the dotted lines are still there and I get the little option there you might see there. It says to duplicate, press enter. So now I have to actually click the enter key on the keyboard to confirm that I want these edges placed. So with delete edge, maintain four-sided polygons turned on when I did it this way, right? So you notice we have these triangles here, these triangles here, hit the enter key and it deleted those edges, so we have maintained these four-sided faces. Even though they're, they're triangles, there's an edge here, there's a vertex there, and another edge there. So that makes two edges along this, this row of the triangle here. So with delete edge turned off, if I do this again, hit enter. Whoop, again, I'll make sure I enter the tool to apply these new settings when I change them. Hit enter, there we go. It does not delete those inner edges there to maintain those four-sided polygons. So there's we found our uh, scenario. <laughs> it's kind of hard to make that happen uh, unless you're really trying to. Okay, so we've covered everything except now smoothing angles. Smoothing angles referring to normals, and we've had a videos on normals before. Please feel free to look at the uh, smooth and hardened edges videos that I have on YouTube. This is what this is referring to, like how the uh, surface is hardened or softened. So in order to show this, I'd have to have a more round surface, like a sphere. Okay, so right now the edges of the sphere are softened. And what that simply means is the smoothing angle is high, like 180 degrees is as high as it goes. That's how you know that it's smooth. It's smooth. It's an increased or high smoothing angle. So again, I'm going to edit, reset setting, just to get it all back to the way it was. And with a smoothing angle of 180, we're going to get a smooth result. Okay, so enter, I can click and drag on an edge loop and let go. And the resulting edges don't create a hard edge seam. Okay, so let me do it again, this time with smoothing angle at zero. If I insert with edge flow, it should make it more apparent. Enter tools, so I change the settings. There we go, you can see it, you can see it much more prominently now. So inserting with edge flow actually offset the edges from the surface, but because they're hardened, you get this kind of line effect through here. If they were softened or high smoothing angle, enter tool. 
then we don't get that line effect. Okay, so I feel like that's a pretty decent explanation of the offset edge loop tool. Offset edge loop, not to be confused with insert edge loop, a couple of different uh, settings there. So I think, in my opinion, if I reset settings, the default settings, I would probably go in here and change this to equal distant and insert with edge flow most of the time. You know, it just depends on the situation, but I feel like this is a, a high probability is what you would want most of the time. Okay, well, I think that's everything I can think of. If I miss anything, please feel free to comment below. If you have any questions, definitely be happy to answer those. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.